inspirational and motivational here I Love how Get a better mindset and set your goals here I Love how Educational things you need to know here I Hey, 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 hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Home Buyers Clubhouse where we go live every Wednesday and every Friday. On Wednesdays, we drop something inspirational and motivational. And on Fridays, we drop something educational. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Jesse Lynn. I'm a triangle realtor with A to Z Realty. Ms. Erica Bats, honey, introduce yourself. Hey, I am Erica Batts. I am your home loan chick, um, mortgage lender. Just, um, yeah, that's, uh, I give you the money to buy the house. Awesome. 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 Y'all I'm super excited today. I know last week we get started on, you know, you know, we know this time of the year, a lot of people, they are struggling mentally. Um, they're trying to figure out how they're getting their Christmas gifts. Some people are falling behind on bills and all of that. So we are continuing that conversation because believe it or not, Erica, we got a lot of a lot of people um, streaming that video. They've been watching it and I'm sure they have questions and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to briefly go over what we discussed last week. Um, that's part one. If you guys want to see it, it's the same title, uh, Struggling to Pay Your Bills. And we're talking about how to catch up on those bills as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that, that topic. Um, because a lot of people, they are suffering silently. They are suffering in silence. Okay. So for those of you guys who missed last week, um, very briefly, um, and Erica, slow me down. Cause you know, I go fast sometimes So slow me down and just kind of fill them in on some stuff, you know, if I'm going too fast. So, you know, uh, last week, the first thing we discussed was, um, where do you, what discovering, where do all your money come from? We talked about getting apps and all of that how to track your income and all of that. Okay. We talked about that, writing down everything and starting from there. And then the next thing you want to do is, so that's your income tracker. Your number two, three thing was your spending tracker. Um, and a lot of us, we truly don't know, like we don't realize how much money we spend. Right. Cause sometimes right. we sit down and we do our income tracker and then we discover that, uh, we spend it more than we actually have coming in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, that's one thing. So what did, did we give them an app to track their spending? Do you have, we, I think we did talk about a couple of different ones that are out there. Um, mm -hmm. but as the influence be saying it, what do they say is they paying me. So we talk about it. <laughs> no, we did <laughs> We did give them a couple. Okay, yeah. So look, y'all, there are a ton of apps out there that'll help you um, track your spending. Um, there are a ton of apps also that'll help you track your savings and all of that, okay? Um, but to track your income, the best way to do it is just to make sure you uh, write it down. Write it down and see how much money you actually have coming in because, again, you don't want to be spending more than you are actually saving. And then um, one thing is we said, get a bill calendar. Um, you need to know where, when your bills are due. Um, you need to write them down on your calendar and figure it out. Um, some people don't understand that, you know, sometimes it may be best to split your mortgage or split your rent payments, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, for years, that's what I've done. Even if I got an extra check, I still that bi-weekly when i was paid bi-weekly i split my mortgage in half and that money was coming out that way so split it split your rent split your mortgage and then that way when it's time to pay that rent or if something comes up and then you sitting here you completely broke one one week and then the next week you know you're just taking money from here and there and not understanding where you know it'd be a little bit easier in your pocket um they have something that's called flex pay. Um, have you heard of that, Erica? I have. That's where you are able to take a purchase and split up that payment. 
Um, mm -hmm. uh, they call it a firm or, you know, like when you get ready to buy something and it mm -hmm. says you can make, instead of paying $100 today, you can make four payments of $25. Yeah. So they have something like that with your rent. It's called flex. Um, I've heard of it, um, prior to um, receiving an email, but I received an email about it as well. Um, but it's something that's called flex and it's, is something that'll help you split your rent. You can split your rent and then you can, um, and they'll pay your landlord for you. So that's, that's something that's out there. Um, so yeah. So for each one of your bills, you want to mark the payment date, um, seven days before the due date, um, for mail and then two days before your due date for online payments. So just track, mm -hmm. keep track of it. Again, for me, I have my stuff on auto pay and my stuff just comes out. But when that money get low, honey wait hold up where that come from so right. it's an idea to know um so it's good to have it coming out on the same dates you know you can set it up through your credit card company or whoever to change your payment dates and okay i want this coming out <clears throat> at the beginning of the month and i want this one coming out at in the middle of the month or whenever you get paid or whatever so yeah <clears throat> excuse me so um so that was one thing. And the one thing that I like most um, that we ended our our um, topic on was um, do some reflecting, right? Um, like what what is one thing I want to change, right? And we talked about that. We said this tool will help you identify the things that really matter to you. Um, you need to work towards a future um, that include these things. Um, track your progress, take pride in making life better for you and your family. And then what we said to do was you want to pick a statement that interests you, write down your goals and share your goals with someone who will hold you accountable. So what, some things that we said do was one thing I'm proud of is one promise to myself is one thing I like to change and one dream I have for myself. And then you also wanted to write down who can help me achieve this goal because it's not, it's nothing no better than having an accountability partner. And you also wanted to write down the date that you wanted to complete these goals. All right, Erica, did I get everything from last week? I think you did. Okay. 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 So what I have here, balance the act, enter your weekly income into the calendar to compare the weekly bills, other expenses. Don't forget things like your birthday, your holidays and school. Oh, yeah, we did talk about that last week. Your school expenses or bills that are due every few months. So your children have birthdays. We have Christmas coming up. We have Thanksgiving, which is mm -hmm. an extra expense. And, you know, Thanksgiving is expensive, honey. Like my sister, what, what we cooking this year? I don't know who cooking. I show up. That's that's all I got for you. No, <laughs> listen, somebody got to cook something, cater something, or something. But you know, a lot of people, uh, people spend so much money on like holidays and stuff. I was looking at one of those little skits today where the person was like, "Well, what we eating?" And when I tell you, it was uh, angel eggs, devil eggs, Jesus eggs, pineapple upside down cake, pineapple downside up cake. <laughs> It, chocolate cake, red velvet cake with, without, nut, like it was all this stuff. And I'm like, that's the reality for a lot of families. Like my mom, she cooks like that. So it's like, I think one Thanksgiving, we had probably about 35 things. Girl, bye. I told my sisters I bring a can of corn and I show up. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Maybe. Well, a can of corn? No. <laughs> I bring a can of corn. And I'm going to show up, honey. That's what I got look, for you. I'm just noticing this. the sun is going in and out of the clouds. So it's getting all these shadows on my face. <laughs> it's okay. all good. It's all good. You've been sun kissed. Yeah. All right. So. so, oh, and school, back to school. You know, we, we mm -hmm. normally do this around back to school time as well, because we know a lot of people struggle and we always kind of give some topics. And probably as we get closer to December, or maybe uh, we're all Thanksgiving. Good night. Saying, we're here. We are here. We got to find some resources for y'all by Wednesday so y'all can get a free turkey or something. So we got to find that for y'all by Wednesday. We, we need to look some stuff up. Because um, some people, they can't, they honestly and truly can't afford um, Thanksgiving. They really can't. 
So we're gonna we're gonna drop some free resources for y'all. Um, but um, anyway, back to what was I saying? So top of mind, you can use this calendar as a daily. Okay, cool. As a daily reminder, just to pin it up, um, so you can see it. All right, so let's move on. So all right, so we just talked about um writing down your goals and finding an accountability partner, right? That was one thing we talked about. But what you can do is you can take this a step further. Um, create an, an action plan, right? So just think about how long it will realistically take you to reach your goals, right? And then make an action plan and stick to it. Don't forget to list any resources that might help you. For example, and we were just talking about this. I said, I need to look some up for y'all. So for example, you might seek out information, tools and equipment, professional assistance alone or find transportation. Um, so again, if gas is an issue, can you carpool with somebody? Do you have a friend that you can go to work with every day? Can y'all carpool? Um, same thing if you're taking your children to school as well. Um, can you can they carpool with someone? So it's it's okay to ask for help. And we talk about this a lot. Ask for help. Come up with an action plan. Some people are happy to help you. And I was just having this conversation with my sister the other day. And I was like, man, me and you are so much alike when it comes to this. Like when it comes to either one of us buying each other anything, you know, she like she likes to give me flowers randomly and stuff like that. Right. And then mm -hmm. if she buy me something, I'm trying to force her some cash out money. If I buy her something, she's trying to force cash out money on me. And I was like, you know, you and I both have a problem with accepting gifts from people. Why can't we allow people to bless us? You know what I'm saying? So y'all need to learn how to let people bless you. You're not being, being a burden on anyone. And mm -hmm. one thing you need to think of is how do you feel when you bless someone? Does that feel good to you deep down in your heart? So you're not inconveniencing that person whenever someone is trying to bless you. Allow someone to bless you. It's okay, y'all. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to receive those blessings because you might have been praying and asking God for this thing and he could have sent that person to bless you and you allowing your pride to get in the way saying, because this is me, I'm talking to myself. You allowing yourself, to, I'm okay. It's okay. No, I figured it out. It's okay. Let somebody bless you, man. Let. I will say, um, so now sometimes we feel like, oh, we don't want to ask somebody for something. I was like, no, well, I can't take that. And I remember that um, my mom ran into a lady and the lady was in a store. And I think they was looking at like pomegranates or something. And mm -hmm. in that particular store, they came in a box and it was probably like maybe six or nine of them in a box. And mm -hmm. so they were in the grocery department. They were talking about it. And so the lady checked out before my mom. And so the lady waited for her outside so she could give her some of the pomegranates. And my mom was like, well, no, I don't need them and I'm fine. And I can, you know, I can buy some or whatever. And the lady said, this is not about you. This is what God told me to do. So mm -hmm. by you saying no, then you're blocking my blessings. Right. And that kind of stood out to me because you're right. Most of the time we think about, oh, well, I don't, I can, I can do this or I, I don't need somebody else to do this for me. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's not about what you need is about what God told someone else to do for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I got that from my life coach. Um, Cause for me, you know, I like helping people, you know, when I can, you know, I can't always, but when I can help people, I enjoy it, you know? So, but mm -hmm. me, I always say, no, no, it's okay. No, let me buy lunch for you. No, it's okay. I got it. You know, Right. And it's we we just gotta we gotta allow to we gotta allow other people to do stuff for us, y'all. You're not interested in them. Stop letting pride get in the way. Absolutely, absolutely. So I've been saying yes more, and that's what I told my sister. I said, You need to work on saying yes more. I said, you know, I said, I'm doing better with that. Um, you know, okay. every once in a while I'll say yes, and then sometimes I say no, and then I say, Yeah, sure. And, you know, we talked about this one time before about seniors on here, right? You know how they say seniors, if anytime they offer you something, accept it. Because, you know, right. they, you know, that, when you go to their house, they offer you something, take it. You know, you want something to drink? Sure. Had a senior, he <laughs> had a garden and he just wanted to give me. And I, at first I was like, no, oh, then I thought about it. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll take some of those. 
And I'm telling you, every time I talk to him, dad's like, oh, he talk about this. Come on by. He's mm -hmm. playing a whole garden. He's by himself. And he got a whole garden of stuff. But he just want to give it away, you know. So let well, other people. eat it all. A exactly. So, yeah. That's all I'm saying, y'all. You never know what you may be doing for that next person whenever you say yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's talk about it, y'all. So we've talked about where um, tracking your money, tracking your expenses and writing down your goals and holding yourself accountable. So the next thing you need to determine is how can I get extra money out of my situation? Mm. How can I get extra money out of my situation? So what we're going to discuss here is like, we're going to talk about how to earn more by taking on work or charging for services. Again, me like to give stuff away all the time. Yeah. Charge for services sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Um, get money quickly by selling stuff or expanding your benefits. Erica, I think that was you. Was that you? Somebody told me that every time their mama needed some extra money, they'll do yards. That, was, that wasn't you, was it? That wasn't you. Uh, no, that was not me. Okay, so we'll talk about it. Get money quickly by selling stuff or expanding your benefits, right? Spend better by developing habits um, that save you money. Cut costs by avoiding fees or canceling memberships. Ooh, we. How long have right. you had that gym membership, child? <laughs> Listen, that's exactly why I said I will not do another gym membership because I can't. I can tell you, I've had at least three where I went for a couple of months, and then for the next eighteen months, I sat on the couch and paid them girl look it's not just the gym um right. you, again in real estate i've signed up so much stuff i never know how what i have coming out until that the funds get low or my right. account is almost maxed out and i'll be like oh I, I thought i canceled that you know <laughs> something i'll never use and i will say so review these... your review your credit card bills and stuff i had something mm -hmm. i had been charged for for six months they were charging me 40 dollars a month and i had i just hadn't noticed and when I finally uh, noticed, I had to go back and see, well, how long have they been charging me for this? Girl, DoorDash paid me $200 because, like, uh, my Facebook account was canceled. Um, and I, you know, I was logging in to DoorDash through my Facebook account. But kind of find out, you know, when you do that Dash Pass or whatever, mm -hmm. they were doing it for, like, over a year. And I'm just like, wait. That's crazy. Hold up. So, yeah. So yeah, they pay you, me back. Busy, you don't pay attention to stuff. So mm -hmm. probably if you go through your bills, you'll find all kinds of stuff that you'll be like, oh, I didn't know I was paying for two Netflix accounts. That, or, that was, that was the next was, thing. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. That was the next thing. I was going to say these TV accounts, you know, all these apps that we have on our TV, all of those that you don't really watch. When was the last time? Like me, I only use stars a while back to watch power, but I still kind of do. But that's the only reason mm -hmm. I use it. But I'm saying, do you need it? Do you really need it? Like, come on. So go back. Yes. Memberships. Um, And think about this also. Um, If you run out of money before the end of the month, think about ways you can increase income and decrease spending. So what we about to talk about right now is it's going to it's going to um prompt. It, it, this tool has prompts that can put you on a path towards more money in and less out. So in more, more money in and less out. So let's share our options. Um, you Share your options that you have identified above. So let's talk about it. All right. So one thing you want to do is think about some ways to bring more money in. What we talk about? We talk about Uber. I've known someone who done saved $20,000 for that down payment just by Ubering. You got Etsy out there just by you doing your crafts. I know somebody who done that as well and still doing it and they are successful. Like, what do you like doing for the people that like to paint and get creative um, for the people that like to do decor, all kinds of stuff that you could do, like hobbies that you actually enjoy. You can make money off of. And I'm telling you from real and working in real estate, I have seen people who want to achieve that goal of home ownership so bad. They will go and do this stuff. Go and do your yard sales, go through your house, check your attic, do whatever and sell stuff that you don't use. Like right. do it. Um, I know people that does arbitrage, different things like that. Like for one, you can start in your closet and see like stuff that you don't wear. These name, name brands, items that you don't wear. You can sell that this stuff on eBay and 
what's this posh they have all kinds of um, right. websites right now yeah amazon you see some stuff on clearance inside the store especially this time of year people are making crazy money on amazon by going in the store getting stuff on clearance and then they turn around and sell it on amazon because we're desperate this time of the year to get these gifts for our children and turn mm -hmm. around and mark it up and sell it for anything so it's so many ways for you guys to go out there so let's talk about it what kind of skills do you have what kind of skills you have write that down um erica name some stuff you like doing audience what um, do you like well, i like shopping so the arbitrage would be something that's, you know, because I'm in the stores anyway. And when you're in there, you're like, oh, well, I see such and such. Target has this on clearance. Well, let me see how much that would sell for in, on Amazon. See, I hate shopping. See how that's see, I love shopping. Yeah. But then you can also do things like um, you can throw events. Like, you know, back in the day, they used to throw rent parties. So you throw the mm. little party. $5 for everybody, for, for each person to get in. That's how you got your rent. Same things. You like to bake. I bought some cookies off Etsy, too. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. What else? All right. So what or you like to do? Creative. You can be creative and do, um, you can sell some note cards. Like, they're talking about all the digital creators and how mm -hmm. they are creating digital products. I know somebody that made $1,200 on DoorDash in a week. Right. I don't even know how that's possible, but they done it. They done it. Like that's what well, I'm saying. Really? Like that's two hundred dollars a day for six days. Tips, he said. So, mostly so tips. By the time yeah. you, you know, if you run in like a really a full shift, that's mm -hmm. that's actually not very hard. Okay. And for the people out there who don't like assistance and who don't want to ask for help, like what programs can you consider? Um, you know, like public housing or benefits like SNAP, Medicaid, and different things. I right. tell this story a lot. When I was ready to buy my house, when I was ready to buy my house, I nicely got myself right on in an apartment based on my income. I'm mm -hmm. self-employed and I was only paying like $7.75 a month until I yes. could save. When I got my house, I paid off my car. I had money mm -hmm. saved up or whatever. So ask for help, y'all. You got to set your pride aside. I'm telling you, I had people, oh, Jesse, um, um. I heard um, you were, uh, yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> what's the problem? I ain't no shame in my game. Like, come on now. Like, you got to do what you got to do. Because guess what? I saw my future. I saw my future goals. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be here for a year. You know, that's my goal. I'm going to stay here right. for a year. I'm going to save up my money. These people approve me. I'm going to take it. Ain't no shame in my game at all. Right. Anyway. So um, other options I have, can you run errands for someone, give people rise or sell um, produce from your garden? We were just talking about people that like to plant gardens. Can you sell stuff you no longer need, like old equipment, your extra clothes at a yard sale or online? I know people who have do yard sales for a, for a living child. Right. And they say they make like six figures. I'm like, mm -hmm. that is crazy. I people mean, because you got to think about somebody is selling you their stuff at a discount, right? And then mm -hmm. you didn't turn around taking it and selling it to somebody else. Right. And people like me that just give stuff away. I put my dog on couch, <laughs> my couch on, on um, Facebook for $50, a three piece couch, because I was just trying to get rid of it. Three piece couch. Nothing wrong with the couch at all, honey. Nice. And couch. I bet it wasn't up there for 20 minutes. It won't. They were burning me up, burning me up. But, you know, when we were moving, trying just trying to get rid of the stuff, come clean out our garage. People came in there, got that stuff. They probably resold half of that stuff. But you know what? I need to help. They help me. And I, I help them in some kind of way. So yes. Um, so what fees can you avoid? Um, do you have do you pay um fees to access your money? Like, for example, from ATMs or check cashing or services, can you open a non-fee bank account? A lot of people don't realize that because some of these bank accounts are ridiculous. And I state employees, when I joined them, they were a lifesaver for me, honey, because some of these other banks, they get over. Well, like, it's, yeah, it's a fee for this, a fee for that. Right. It's crazy. So what about your utilities? Can I reduce my utilities? Can you unplug some appliances um, when you're not using them? Can you set your thermostat lower during the winter and higher during the summer? It's different things like that that can save you some money. Just do your research and, and kind of look at so, some of those things. Some plans I can change. Write this down. Do you qualify for... um? a lifeline phone for lifeline phone rates 
Do you have memberships you or you're not using? We just talked about this, your magazine subscriptions, your movie right. streaming services, your gym memberships. And what habits can I change? Like, what would you consider changing to save money, cooking at home versus eating out? I've been doing that a lot. Um, buying secondhand versus new. You know, yeah. that's one thing I posted online today when I said I found this jacket in my closet, right? And girl, I was telling the, uh, my grandma, she passed away in 2020. But when, every time I wear this jacket, I think about her. I hardly ever wear it. But when I do, I think about her. Because she was like, oh, I like it. Where you need it? I told her she almost had a whole fit. I, said, I got it from Rose's grandma. I got it from Ro <gasps> Rose's. Ain't that the penny store? <laughs> <laughs> she let name brand Listen, child. <laughs> Rose's got some good stuff. <laughs> Look, I stingy. You. you don't know your granddaughter too much. <laughs> I'm not about to go spend a lot of money on stuff. I have a a um a sax card, and I ain't never used it. But I got one. Right. But I ain't never used it. Like ooh. me either. Mm. Me either. Mm. What's this? Anyway, so <clears throat> a step further. You know, you can borrow, uh, I'm about to say a, a word that some people may not know what this means. So I'm about mm -hmm. to say <clears throat> You can borrow DVDs and CDs. <laughs> Look, do they still even have them anymore? <laughs> Girl, I got a DVD player upstairs right now. <laughs> you know what? We actually had to buy a DVD player Um, because um, I don't know if you remember when I first moved here, we didn't have internet. So mm -hmm. we was watching TV. We just had to watch DVDs and stuff. Yeah, you got. So we had to do that box. for about three months. You know, Redbox is still in business, so that's why I said it. I'm like, somebody, y'all ain't gonna recognize these words. Redbox mm -hmm. is still in business, or whatever. So yeah, and don't forget to return them to avoid late fees and uh, maintain your car, keeping up on oil changes, your tire pressure. That can save you money on fuel and repair costs, and right. see if you can increase the deductible on your car insurance. Um to lower your monthly payments. A lot of people, that's one, because when people buy a car insurance, they really don't know what they're buying. They just ask how much of my monthly payments. So they don't realize that they can change and adjust these different things. But if you have a car accident, you're going to have to pay more out of pocket. So that's going to be the biggest issue. But are you planning, a lot of us don't plan on having car accidents. But like I said, some happen, yeah. You got to pay more out of well, pocket. Just prepare. That's where your emergency fund comes into place. So if you know that you got a $1,000 deductible and you mm -hmm. save $1,000, then you know you're prepared in the event something does happen. Absolutely. And when you buy groceries, check for the price late before the cost per serving. Um, sometimes larger quantities don't actually save money. And consider restaurants with kid kids where kids eat free. Honey, girl, them, taking yep. them kids are expensive and that money adds up. I'm telling Look, and you. And they, they say kids meals, but some of them eat like adults. Absolutely. Absolutely. And my child had a fit when she was like, she didn't want to order on the kids' menu no more. Like, oh, girl, you better order that kids' menu. You're still 12. You better go on, on over there. <laughs> she was trying to let you know she grown. She thinks she grown. She thinks she grown. Look, y'all, couponing. Oh, my God. My sister is a professional at this. She like to shop. She like to mm -hmm. spend. And she's really good at couponing. I'm telling you, I haven't bought detergent in months because I get it from my sister because she got a, a garage full of it. Um, yeah. And look, so and check to see if you qualify for weatherization services, um, incentives or programs for your house. And then by bringing in more money or resources, spending less, um, you want to free up what? What do you want to free up? So y'all got to learn how to just write it down, come up with a plan and decide how or what are you going to save on and where are you going to get this extra money from? That's the mm -hmm. goal. Erica, you got any feedback on those, honey? No, just, you know, I feel like these are really great suggestions for anybody, whether you, you know, struggling or just trying to maintain a budget. So it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be a struggle to be able to use any of these options. Exactly. So, and also um, one thing you want to do is like, how do I make um, tough choices in tight months? So that's one thing you're going to have to do um, if you fall behind on your bills. So um, some things, things I need to keep or get a job, like transportation to get to work and we talked about this earlier your car payment and your gas and your insurance you need these things right um right. you need tools for work and your uniform child care all right yeah um, you need car insurance and your health insurance all these other things what do you need to currently prioritize like your utilities your rent and your mortgage 
but what are those obligations that you actually don't need? Um, so talk about that as well. But le- one thing I really want to touch base on, because I still have two more sections to go and we are already at 1230. Um, mm-hmm. But if a debt collector contacts you, what you don't want to do is ignore them, you guys. Um, believe it or not, we all get behind. But I'm telling you, if you actually have a conversation with them, they have all kinds of stuff. They can lower your credit card payments. Um, they can give you lower interest rates. They have stuff like this because people, they get behind all the time. So don't be afraid. I don't know why we got this thing that um, that we, why we always say avoid debt collectors. We avoid bill collectors. Yeah. But if you have this conversation with them, some of them are actually willing to help. And they're not all buttholes, y'all. They're really not. They're not. Um, I used to be so, a collector way back in my career. So, yes, I definitely understand. Yes. So, y'all, y'all I'm telling you because y'all can work, work out some payment plans. They'll talk to y'all. I'm telling you, I know from experience, they will lower your payments. Lower them. Okay? So have that conversation and let them know what's going on because they they were asking y'all can set up a plan like a six month plan for you to get your 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 interest lowered and they will help you get your payments lowered as well for about six months. Is there it exists? Um, yeah. All right. So you got anything you want to add to that, Erica? No. All right. And then the next thing is you want to find out who can you turn to for help. Um, again. So let's see what I have in here. So you need help paying your housing or paying your utility bills. Let's talk about it. Uh, Number one, the first person you want to do is you want to call the FCC to see if you qualify for a lifeline phone rate. That number is 888-225-5322. And again, that's FCC. And this is you calling for a lifeline phone rate. The next thing is um, you need to find out about public housing to see if you qualify for that. You can call HUD's housing counselor. And that number is 800-569-4287. Okay. If you need help finding a job, you can go to usa.gov slash find dash a dash job. And you can call the American Job Centers to find out what's required for different careers at 877 872-5627. Now, if you need help dealing with debt, um, you can call the FCC, the NFCC, and that number is 800-388-2227. And for a student, if you need help with student debt, you can go to cfpb.gov slash paying dash for dash college. And this one right here is very important. If you need some legal help, you can go to, um, and it's it's state by state, you can go to lawhelp.org, lawhelp.org to find out if you're eligible um, for assistance from um, legal services program funded by Legal Services Corporation. And I've I've referred people to this place as well. Go to isc.gov slash what dash legal dash a slash Fine dash legal dash aid. <laughs> That's a y'all whole lot of dashes. It sure is. Just y'all can Google it. That's why I'm saying it that way. All right. So and a lot of stuff, y'all. If y'all need help, like with with your bank and your debt collectors, just go to the cfpb.gov and um talk to them and do your research as well. And same thing with your benefits as well. Y'all can go to benefits.gov, ssa.gov. Um, you need help with your health care, you can go to healthcare.gov. Uh, Medicaid programs out there, medicaid.gov, and to get local help with Medicare and SHIP programs, you can go to shiptacenter.org. Girl, that's a lot. But I hope it helps somebody because a lot of people out there, they need help. And I see posts all the time on Facebook. Um, people there are getting evicted. They don't know where to go. They don't know mm-hmm. where to start. And I really hope that this bless somebody. If you missed it and you're just tuning in, just go back and watch our video, you guys, because we are going over already. Erica, you got a thing you want to add? And it's another number. Is it 211? 211? Is it 711? It's 211. I always got to Google it. Different in different areas. And I think 211 is um, United Way. Yeah. So they will will be able to help you with some resources there as well. Absolutely, you guys. So look, um, 
some people, I'm telling you, some people are getting getting evicted within the next 14 days. They have a section for that on that site also. So mm -hmm. just ask for help, y'all. Ask for help. Don't sit there and try to run from it because it's going to catch up. It's okay to ask for help. Right. Erica, I don't know. I just asked, but you got anything you want to add? Nope. All right, y'all. I said a lot. I feel like I've been talking a lot, but um, I had to get it out because we, we just keep running out of time. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Jesse Lee and I'm a triangle realtor with A to Z Realty. You can reach me at 919-818-9854. Erica. Hey, and I am Erica Batts. I am your mortgage loan officer. You can reach me at 919-608-7916 or you can reach me at ericabatts.com. Y'all can reach us in the clubhouse at Home Buyers Clubhouse at the Home Buyers Clubhouse. Wait, let me get this right. At www.thehomebuyersclubhouse.com. You can find us on Facebook and in our, in our group and on our private page at Home Buyers Clubhouse. And you can find us on YouTube at the Home Buyers Clubhouse. We hope you guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you guys later.